Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. So let's talk about electromagnetic induction. Now this is actually one of the most important discoveries of the 19th century that has to do with electricity and magnetism. It actually follows from the kirchhoff faraday lentz law, but the ideas that we kind of brought out of this led to the modern power grid and power transmission. So let's see how this works. Electromagnetic induction is associated with the property that if you change one current, you can induce changes in another current. So let's see how this works. All right, we got a current in a long wire that's like that. It's going to the right and it's going to increase. So let's see what that increase in current means as far as the Faraday Lenz law is concerned. All right. Well, this current, since it's going this direction, is associated with the magnetic field that's going into the page inside this second circuit loop. All right, this current is increasing. That means that the value of this magnetic field is increasing. That means that the magnetic flux through this loop is increasing into the board. Now, Faraday lengths systems don't like change. It wants it to remain the same. So the increase of the magnetic field into the board generates a current in this loop such that the magnetic field generated by this current points out of the board to try to cancel that increase in magnetic flux. All right, so how does the current have to go to generate a magnetic field that's come in out of the board. Well, right hand rule, magnetic field comes out, fingers show the direction of the induced current. So when we've got this long wire like that, we increase the current, we generate a current down here. Now the beautiful, beautiful thing about this property of electromagnetic induction is that it allows us to transmit current with no physical contact at all. There was no physical contact between the top wire and the bottom current loop. But despite that fact, we use the magnetic field in compliance with the Faraday Lenz law to transmit current down into the other loop. Now, one important thing about this that made Edison very unhappy was that it requires changing current. You cannot do this with just a standard DC current because what would you have to do? Now you just have to increase the current and just keep on increasing it. I mean, that's not sustainable. So what people do instead is they use something called alternating current. So here's the idea. When this current is increasing to the right, the generated current will be counterclockwise. When this current is decreasing, the generated current down here will be clockwise. So if we look over at a graph, and this is an alternating current, notice it looks like a cosine function because that's what they look like, cosine functions. What we need is we need to write down when this current is decreasing, this current should be negative. When this current is increasing, this current should be positive. So let's see. Decrease it so it's negative, so it's going to go down like that. Here it's increasing at the maximum rate. So that means that it's going to be maximum current in the second loop right here. When this current zero. And then keeps on decreasing, so this is still negative, until here where it's going to start to increase. And so now this current generated in the secondary loop will be counterclockwise again, so positive. So we'll go positive, maximum right here, and then down, still positive, until here where this current is now decreasing, and then it'll be negative like that. So you can see that we input an alternating current, and our output current will also be alternating. So this is what allows us to transmit alternating current, or AC. Well, really, I should just say, 
AC. A lot of times people say AC current or AC. AC stands for alternating current, so we're kind of done with that. So the idea is that we can transmit alternating current using electromagnetic induction, and we cannot do so for DC. And that's what led, in 1893, to a pretty much um, all hands on board changeover to AC power in this country. And that's electromagnetic induction. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 